we auditioned hundreds of guitar players. Literally, we, we would turn up at the rehearsal rooms and there would be lines around the block of musicians waiting to see Ozzy. It was a bit of a slow process at first until I met someone who put me in touch with Randy Rhodes. Randy had like a deepish voice for a little guy, a wow, you know. So he goes into the studio and I'm fucking sitting in, in the studio window thing, like that, like that, thing, look at him. I'm fucking zonked. And he goes, way about me to I said, play any fucking thing. So I have a solo and he played his fucking solo and I was like, am I that fucking stone or am I hallucinating or what the fuck is this? very lucky to run in to Randy Rhodes and the guitar sound really reinvented Ozzy's voice. And he had a, a true writing partner and a friend and they really clicked. Everybody thought maybe he was going to be down and out because of what happened with Sabbath, and he just shocked the world. Especially with Randy Rhodes and the, the magnitude of what this guy was doing. I mean, here's this guy who's given Eddie Van Halen a run for his money. Everybody thought that Eddie Van Halen was the king. I knew instinctively that he was something extra special. He was like a gift from God. And having that fucking thing, having a gift from a higher power, well, I don't know what the fucking deal was, but this guy did something to me. And the one thing that he, one thing that he, he gave to me was hope. He gave me uh, a reason for carrying on. Blizzard of Oz, the first record was done in six weeks. It was just, you know, instantly, instantly blew up everywhere. He went right on tour through Europe with the band, then back into the studio three months later to do Diary of a Madman. Both of those albums had a big impact on us as bands. When I first heard Blizzard of Oz, it was so intense. And I just thought, now this is refreshing. listen to his solos, there's actual moments of uniqueness. When I say unique, I mean things that have never been done by a player.
house bands, there's always a special connection with the guitar player and the front man, whoever's holding the mic, and that was definitely the case with Oz and Randy. Ozzy would talk to me about Randy all the time, and he loved him. He really loved him, and he thought the world of him. I think Randy and Ozzy gelled together like, like left and right hand. It was just amazing. Their friendship was, it was just like two best mates, hanging out, laughing, but yet that passion for music, I mean, everything was the albums that they were writing and the gigs and just music talk the whole time. You know, Randy was able to achieve a lot in very short period of time, and a lot of it was due to Ozzy's mentorship. Randy, on behalf of the over half million readers of Guitar Player magazine in the U.S. and in 70 countries throughout the world, I'd like to present you with the 1981 Best New Talent Award. Congratulations. Thank you. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Give him a kiss, Ozzy. <laughs> I've got a lot of work to do, and make, makes you realize there's a lot of responsibility. And this this tour, I want to really get myself together and work harder, you know, because I'm, I'm really proud and honored, and I don't want to stop there, you know. Randy Rhodes, the 25-year-old lead guitarist for Ozzy Osbourne's group, was killed in a plane crash this morning, along with two other people, Andrew Acox, the pilot of the plane, also Rachel Youngblood, the group's hairdresser. Ozzy Osbourne himself was in the van when one of the plane's wings clipped it, but Ozzy escaped injury, we understand. 25-year-old Randy Rhodes is dead today. The morning that Randy was killed, I'll never forget. I never forget we uh, when when you know we had we were there for so many hours because it took so long for for the authorities to came down the police and the fire department. We finally went to a a nearby hotel and I just couldn't stay in my room, so I went down. I, I went out on the street and I found a church right right down the street. All I wanted to do is just sit there and be and and just you know make some sense of what was going on. And I, I didn't even look up, and, and, I, and I, I'm sitting there, and I, and I hear this sobbing and this, and this crying, and, 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 and I, I thought, wow, this, this person has got to be in more pain than, pain than I am. And I look up, and, and it's Ozzy sitting there. The craziest day of my life was the day that Randy Rhodes died, you know. I mean, I couldn't believe that one. I mean, you've got to deal with that, you know. People are... People tend to forget people in this business so quickly, you know. That guy was my brother, man. That, that guy was like a part of my life, you know. And he's dead. Why don't people start talking to me about the death of Randy Rhodes instead of asking me the craziest prank that I've ever done? That was the craziest prank that I've ever witnessed, was seeing that guy burn, you know. And the day that Randy Rhodes died, died it was a day a part of me died, man. And Rachel Youngblood, my, my seamstress. They forget that, you know, it just gets kind of weird. He was a phenomenal guy. He was a part of my life that seemed as long as anything else, and yet he was over in a flash. I can remember the time with Randy Rhodes as much as I can remember the time with Black Sabbath. I lost a dear friend in my life. 